I recently made a video where I reviewed the car behind me, the Tesla Model X. So you watched that and you've probably already seen a lot of other reviews of the Model X. But what you probably don't know, what you might be more interested in, is all of its weird quirks, its strange features, its unusual traits that separate it from a normal car. And so here are all the weird quirks of the Tesla Model X. Now, for more of my thoughts on the interesting quirks, you can, of course, click the link below to check out my column on autotrader.com slash oversteer. Now, let's see what weird things the Model X has in store for us. Here's a question I had. How do you start a Tesla Model X? There's no starter button or keyhole on the left side of the steering column or on the right side of the steering column. Well, it turns out all you do is get in with the key in your pocket. The car is currently off. You put your foot on the brake pedal, then the door closes, and suddenly, I'm ready to go, and go I will. <laughs> and yes, that does mean every time you touch the brake pedal, the door closes. And brake pedal, door. And brake pedal, door. And brake pedal, door. It's the perfect car for lazy people. Speaking of the doors, oh, the doors. I could go forever on the doors, and I'm not even just talking about the falcon wing doors in back. Before we get to those, let's start with just how you open the doors. There isn't a traditional door handle on this car. Instead, you walk up with the key in your pocket, you push the handle, and then the door opens right up, and you climb inside, which seems simple enough. Except, at home where I park, I park next to a really tight little wall that's about two feet from my door. So I have to open the door and then squeeze up against the car in order to get out, which reveals the issue with a vehicle whose door handles you have to push in order to open. Because you're, you're squeezing, you're squeezing, and all of a sudden... <laughs> This actually happened to me earlier today when I was getting out of the car for the first time. All of a sudden the door just opens and I'm like, oh my god, what do I do now? Fortunately, the doors are pretty easy to close from the outside. There's no handle or anything down here. All you gotta do is walk up, push the little red button, and they close. That's simple. But pushing the door handle isn't the only way to open the doors. You see this slick little key fob here that it looks like it has no buttons? Well, actually, it has five buttons. If you tap the little button that looks like a car's window, Look at that. The door opens right up. If you tap the rear area of the key fob, once again, the door opens right up. Of course, it works on the passenger side, and it even works for the front trunk. Tap the little T at the front part of the key fob, and... Yeah, opens right up, first try. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right, there's a front trunk. Because there's no front engine in this car, all the batteries are under the floor, there's a trunk in front, just in case all of your stuff doesn't quite fit in the back. Now, once you're inside the car, you have a few options for how to close the doors. You don't just reach up and pull it closed like you do in some Gullwing cars, it's all electronic. So, there's a little button right here, and you push it, and down comes the door! But the coolest part about opening and closing the doors is the infotainment screen where you can control all of it. You want that back door closed? Well, now it's closing. You want the other side back door open? Well, done. Open. You want the front trunk open? Done. You want the back trunk open? Done. You want the passenger door open? Done. You want the passenger door closed? It's closing. You want the going door and back closed? It's closing. You want the driver open? But none of those things are my favorite thing about the doors. My favorite thing about the doors is that when you push the little button in the center screen to open the back door, the screen actually shows the door opening in real time. Now, here's a big question I have. Can you drive with the Falcon Wing doors open? Now, you shift into drive when the doors are open and these big warnings come up on the center screen in the gauge cluster saying, do not drive. But... <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so the doors are kind of cool and they're fun to play around with, but in practical terms, there are two things about them that kind of annoy me. Thing number one is you forget something in the car. In a normal car, you just open the door, get your thing, and shut the door. It's easy. In this car, you forget something. Oh, you've made a big mistake. You push the button, then you stand here, then you wait, and you wait. Door has opened as much as it wants to. Then you reach in underneath, you grab whatever you've forgotten, you do this, and then you find the button, push it, and wait again, and wait again. Forgetting something in the car, therefore, is like a 15 second mistake, and those add up over time. It gets kind of annoying. The most annoying thing about the doors, though, is although they're cool the first time you use them, when you first get the car and you're really excited about it, eventually it sort of becomes regular for you. But it never becomes regular for other people. If you open the doors in any setting where there's people around, you will constantly get mobbed. It got to the point yesterday when I was filming this video that I just stopped opening the back doors altogether so I wouldn't have to deal with the questions and the comments and the people coming up asking what it is and how it works. And instead I solely was using the front door and the tailgate which open normally. Now, as you probably know, the windshield is huge. It goes all the way up to above your head, which gives you a giant wide sweeping view while you're driving. But how do sun visors work in a windshield that goes all the way above your head? Well, they're located on your left next to your head and they attach to the rear view mirror assembly. And then you can put them down just like a normal sun visor. Here's a crazy feature. When you're driving down the road, the center gauge cluster is constantly giving you all sorts of information. It's showing you where other objects on the side are. It's showing you where other cars are. It even can find box trucks. It can find bicyclists. And it can find empty parking spaces where, of course, it can park itself. It'll show you lane lines. And my personal favorite, it even shows when you put your turn signal on. One of the most talked about features of this car is this giant center screen, and there's already a lot of stuff online about it, but I'll show you some basics. My personal favorite thing about it is that you can just pinch, and then it displays where you are, just like an iPad or any other tablet. It's super easy, and if you want satellite, well, you can do satellite. And here is maybe my favorite feature of the navigation system. You want to figure out how to get somewhere, all you got to do, tap it, navigate, and obviously it brings up the directions and it brings up a little map about how to get there. But my favorite part is it even shows you what the car's charge percentage will be when you arrive to help combat your aggressive range anxiety. Head over to the music tab in the giant infotainment system and you're given a lot of different streaming options, including my personal favorite, Tesla Top 20, which gives you all of the top songs listened to by other Tesla drivers in their cars. Another lovely feature of the giant infotainment screen, if you touch controls, you can bring up the seats. And this allows you to move the center seats forward or backwards, depending on what you want. The thing I like most about this is that the seat actually moves at this exact same rate it's being shown on the screen. So the middle seat's starting to move and... It's like there's a camera inside your car exactly telling you where the seats are going and what current position they're in. Here's another crazy thing about the giant infotainment system. It lets you control virtually every aspect of the car. For example, if you want the doors to lock when you walk away, turn that on. Unlock on park, close all with key fob, headlights after exit, mirrors auto tilt, auto fold, cabin overheat protection, smart preconditioning, whatever that is. You can do all of this stuff. No other car lets you choose so many mundane features. BMW, being German, they just choose it for you. But in this thing, you have the opportunity to really affect every little customizable aspect of this car. And one of the coolest things about this car, as everybody knows, is the autopilot system. I won't bore you with all the autopilot details that you've already heard about. I'll just tell you some of the basics and the interesting quirks. Basic number one, how to start the autopilot system. I assume there'd be some giant button that says autopilot. Actually, there's no labeled button. Instead, you just pull the cruise control stock twice and then you're an autopilot. Now, two things can happen when you pull that cruise control stock to engage autopilot. Thing number one, autopilot engages and you're at the whim of the Model X. Thing number two, you're on a road that doesn't have visible lane lines, so autopilot can't pick it up. So you pull the thing and a little warning light comes on that says auto steer temporarily unavailable. And then you have to drive. <laughs> now, here's the thing that I think is the coolest about autopilot. I want to change lanes. So what do I do? I put the turn signal on, 
the car realizes I want to change lanes, and then it makes the lane change for me. All I have to do is put the turn signal on and have the lane be clear. Let me try it again. Put the turn signal on. The car looks, is it clear? Yeah, it's clear. And then boom, lane changed. So there you go. I've reviewed the Model X. I've driven it. And now in this video, I've shown you all of its unusual, weird quirks and features. And so you have every piece of information about the Model X you could possibly want. So there's a little button right here and you push it and you push it. <laughs> there's a little button. You just push it. <laughs> Instead, there's a little button. You just pull it.